The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Esavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman singing for Larry Pesavento. I do the uh, noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Time show called the Tiger Technicians Hour. And I'm also the author of the opening call daily newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter. And let me just go through this quickly, um, get it out the way. The Dow closed yesterday at 27,137, all time high. It's 200 points higher, 27,398. We're an eye blink away from that. You can see this chart on the left. Let me just move this over right here. And you can see there's a cup formation. And I'll just show you this briefly. The patterns I always look at straight line up or down that's one arch formation that's two cup formation that's three and then you can put a combination of them i put it in red because if the left side low in the lowercase h pattern gets taken out you can go much lower and on the right if the y formation gets taken out on the upside you can go uh, quite a bit higher i always look for an alphabet a b c d e f g the fourth highest peak peak d Peak A is first, peak B second, C is the third, D is the fourth. That's where other things can happen. Doesn't mean to say you get a major sell signal, but often enough, that's where you do get something. Look at the Dow at peak D in the daily chart on the 16th of July. That was a peak D, goes down to a trough E, rallies back up, and now we're in a leg D. But look at the technicals. The MACD is very strong. Stochastics at 96%. Uh, it's going to take quite a while for this to actually turn down uh, very sharply. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to look at here, and I'm going to show it to you um, in terms of patterns. Uh, there's a kind of a V-shaped pattern being formed in the in the daily ch in the weekly chart, and the monthly had a nine-month nine consolidation between January of last year going to the high of October of last year. Then it pulls back, comes all the way to the December low, rallies, and in nine months' time, it makes another peak at a peak C in the Chapman wave. Uh, so you've got these two nine-month uh, periods with very sharp pullback in the second month. If it was much less, I'd say, hey, this is a massive breakout. But this says that you could see a lot of resistance coming up. If we make a new high, uh, it would go to a leg D in the monthly chart. We've got to watch that closely. All right, let's get to the nitty-gritties because the YM, which is the futures, is at this particular point up 68. It's in leg D, 27,380 was the high in the futures. Of course, this is a continuous contract. So this gets smoothed out. Uh, the price <laughs> could be changed in another few weeks' time when we get uh, the contract closure on the options expiration coming up a week on Friday. So this is leg D. We're underneath that previous high. We've had a high today of 27,301. 79 points away from hitting that level. I, this is, as I say, an eye blink away. Let's see what happens here. So that's the uh, futures, the S&P, and this is going to be very interesting because the S&P monthly chart, I've only got this as a peak A. Yeah, it could be an alternate count peak F as the Dow makes a peak D, and then we could have a deeper consolidation. I just want to be as thorough as possible and say, at this point, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be calling this a peak A, which is really bullish because it means you've got another at least six, seven months to make a leg B and then a peak B, then a leg C, a higher C, then a peak C, and then a higher D. It can go all the way into the end of the year, even even to early um, next year, 2020. But you need to hold 2,800 to 2,750 at a worst case basis in the S&P. Now the futures at this particular point, I'll go to the continuous contract. Continuous contract is up 750. We're in a leg E. We're almost at the previous high that was made back in uh, 26th of July, and it was a 3,031.25. The S&P itself, the cash, made a high of uh, 27.98, and we're trading right now 3,000 3, and 0.93. And this is going to be very, very important because how, if and when there's a test of the high, how it breaks is very much 
this resistance level in this expanding wedge. I put it in because a lot of people are talking about it throughout the uh, internet. They're talking about this expanding wedge formation. You know what? I've seen expanding wedge formations break to the upside, and then there's nothing to discuss. So I'm just saying that I I put it in because it's a discussion. I always like to put things in to test them out. At this particular point, the magnet of this this gray line. I'm going to make it a green line because if there is a decisive break above it, that's going to be very positive. So if there is a move in September that takes you to 3,000 and I don't want to just break it by a little bit. It has to go into the 3,040s. That's a, and a close any week above that, that's going to be important. So I just wanted to show you that. Let's get out of this, and we're going to look at the QQQ, which is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. This is the QQQ Invesco Trust Series trading 193.72 up a dollar 29 pre market. Yesterday's close was 192.43. All time highs are 195.55. This is going to be good because you've got the same kind of pattern. Now, this is a slightly different one. This has the rectangle formation that takes you like this sharp move down. And then what I always say is that within the rectangle formation in a shorter time frame, you should get a peak A, B, C, and even a D that takes you close to right on or just above the previous high, which is 195.55. And at that point, you could start to see a consolidation take place. MACD is very strong. Stochastic is really good at 90 percent. So I see very good support in the 191 area. Uh, over the next uh, couple of days. Now I want to look at the IWM, which led the pack uh, all week. And it's even up 14 cents right now at 157.14. Leg C. Got the cup formation. 159.23 was the high of July the 21st. Hey, 173.39 is the all time high. This is way, way under it. The, the, the Russell 2000 has been lagging decisively. Let's see if this becomes a leader over the next uh, month or two, because if it does that, suddenly you've got fund managers saying, hey, we know what to buy. It was a little confusing before because we kept going into the fang stocks. They're not doing all that great. Well, one or two are, but they're not really doing all that great. Um, they kind of stall like Amazon. Uh, let's go to the small caps, so there'll, there'll be a place to go. So I want you to do that. I want you to show you something also that I think is really interesting. Look at the dollar. Very strong, up 44 pips at 99.06. This is getting close to the 99.37, most recent multi-year high in the Chapman wave. We'll look at the moves from the low of 88.25. We are long, uh, subscribers are long from um, April of last year at 90.07 via the UUP, the trading vehicle. It's trading right now at 99.06. This is, uh, you know, up to 10% in the currency. That's a pretty big deal. And the currency, I call I call the dollar the Holly Davidson of the American, uh, well, of the international currencies. It's the one, it's the icon, the American icon. I'm not talking about the company Holly Davidson, is, which has just been terrible, although they're getting an electric, uh, uh, motorbike, electric motorbikes. Not the point. The point is the, just the name brand of Holly is it's like Cadillac around the world used to be. So I'm looking at this as the holly of, of currencies. It's where countries want to go if they want to protect their own uh, currency. So uh, the dollar is up very nicely. But wait a minute. If the dollar is up stronger than gold, should mm -mm, be up $24 at 1527. Remember, I drew in this rectangle formation. I believe in rectangle formations because they can last a lot longer than your patients. So gold is stuck between 1546 and 1488. And it's right there. It's in a little bit of the, it's kind of in the mid range of the last big move to 1566. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, just to show you, I remember I mentioned rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patients. Look at this rectangle patients in the two minute chart of the E mini, the three, uh, 3012 ish. Yeah, 3012 is resistance, 3006 is support, and it's just kind of stuck for ever since uh, the spike up at about uh, quarter to eight. Uh, this morning, Eastern time, and now it's just stuck in this trading range. So let's get back to our story here. So we're looking at uh, silver isn't acting as well as gold. Gold's, um, silver's up 16 cents at 18.33. Um, I suspect that both gold and silver are going to be pulling back. Silver as a target for me. Shorter term, meaning to, I'd go to maybe Monday or Tuesday into the 1750 area, maybe even to the 17s. And then we'll see, because that's that's going to be a big deal if it pulls back to that. 1753 is the, is the weekly 200 period exponential moving average. And gold right now trading up uh, 22 I think it could pull back to the 1506, 1480 area. And if it takes that out, goes below it, it means you've got time and price in gold and silver consolidating. The TLT is trading right now up quite strongly, $1.60. Well, it had a pullback from 148.90 down to the 140 area. I would say that, you know, that's. Uh, eight points, nine points, that's a pretty big pullback. Well, of course, it's had a spectacular move up. So I think that yields are going to consolidate, um, having bounced, and they can still hold their gains for a little while longer. I think that the TLT is almost the same as gold. If the TLT bounces and reverses at about 130, 142.80 to 143.70, maybe even touch 144.30, uh, and then reverses at any point in the next week and a half, takes out 139 support, then we'll look at 138 is the 14-period uh, exponential moving average in the weekly chart. Uh, this is going to be important. So um, IYR is the REITs, and they've done really well in this period. Uh, look at this going bumping into, I call this a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look how many times this green and red uh, 
up channel has been hit and then the price has been repelled yet again this is an f and the MACD is still good not great but good and stochastic is good at 87 percent and it hasn't pulled back that much but if the iyr that's the u.s reits index trust starts to pull back deeper and closes at any point under 90.70 on a daily basis, that's going to say now finally REITs because REITs are represented both capital gains and a decent dividend. So that's kind of important to watch. Um, something I wanted to also look at was the EUR, USD is trading down sharply, uh, much better than it was earlier. It's at 1.09. It's just not a great pattern, these these arch formations that keep making a lower look. This is that dreaded H pattern, lowercase h right there, the low that was made on the 3rd of September at 1.0926. Today's low is 1.0927. So it's almost it just barely touched that, trying to rally off it. This guy, the, the MACD and Stochastic are okay, but it, there's plenty of room on the downside if it takes out the low of, uh, if it closes under the low of the 3rd of September. Look at the USD, this is the yen, the USD JPY, this is the, 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 the dollar, US dollar Japanese yen currency pair trading at 107.71. Uh, this is nice action. Look, there's an I love to make these patterns just so easy to do, and it makes it just visually easy for me. I'm very visual. Some people are very mathematical. I try to put the two together, but it's mostly visual. And you're in a leg C with a MACD, very strong stochastic, way up at 96%. Over 80% is good. Over 90% is very good. In the mid-90s is just great. And this is acting very well so far. Nice bounce in the weekly chart, but it needs to hold. 107 to 106.95 support. It needs to get to the 108 right there. 108.60s quite quickly. And that will say um, good, very good action. Uh, I haven't, what have I not covered? Oh, I, I haven't covered uh, uh, copper. Copper is in the lower range. And copper, they might call this Dr. Copper. I don't know if they even want to call it Dr. Copper anymore. But it does, it does represent international buying of. Uh, building, you know, some kind of building. And in this particular instance, it's at 2.61. I was asked if I look at SCCO. I haven't got this note. I don't think, yep, I had a notator. It's not notator right now. This is a really good move. This is a leg B. And SCCO is, in fact, Southern Copper Corporation, obviously, in the copper field, 34.56. Ah, copper field. This is the David of, um, right, the metals. All right, A. B. So this is very nice. This is a nice cup shape, cup shape formation right there. It looks, it's actually a little bit better than the copper chart. It's held much better than the copper chart. So the question is, um, could I review it? Yes. So SCCO, Southern Copper, trading at 34.56, has had a very strong move going from the low that was made on the 26th of August of 29.39. Six points, 29.39 I think that I said the 26th of August. Let's just put that in. You're correct if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, very nice. So what I normally would do is I would do a left side, right side price time match, um, and I'd take it to this. It's already hit that goal, and it's above the weekly 14 period moving average of 34.03. I like this. This is what I'm going to say. It might be early, and it might be another one of those big runs in three weeks that it has, and the fourth week it starts to turn down. So I'm going to be watching this closely. Why? In this particular instance, the MACD is extremely strong. Look, it crossed positive right there, the moving average convergence divergence. I know Larry doesn't use it, so some of you might not be interested in this if you're using Larry's techniques. But I do like this because, look, the green line follows the price. See the way the green line? Not always, but in this particular case it is. And it's expanding. And the histogram, that's the little vertical lines that represent the distance between the green line period uh, um, differential and the, I call it the fast moving average and the slow moving average of 26 uh, exponential moving average days um, that's an exponential means the greatest weight on the last close and I like this this is acting very well the 200 period moving average of 36.15 will come into play as a magnet if um, 
SCCO can even, it doesn't have to close there, it just has to get to 35.09. Once it gets there, it says that 30, 36, um, 15 area is game. That's number one. Number two is this is a pattern that I call the squash where the MACD runs up sharply. The reason why I put the slow stochastic below it years and years ago when I started doing this, I think I got this from Jake Bernstein's book way, way back. What is it called? I got it somewhere around. I can't see. Um, and uh, that's one of the few, uh, one of the few things that I actually took from someone, otherwise almost everything that I've done has really been an investigation that I did myself and I developed these things. But in this particular instance, I love the, the idea of the stochastic. I don't know if you use the MACD, but I use this because the stochastic is the torque. It gives me that starting first gear, second gear, third gear. Of course, if you've got an electric motor, you don't have that. But you've got this torque. And if the MACD expands commensurately with the price moving up parallel, I call that chap wave squash, and that should get you very quickly to a leg C. Then the stochastic starts to flatten out and the MACD takes the momentum. It takes over the torque and becomes a momentum play. And that green line keeps you going and that should take you to a D. I like it. I think there's tremendous support between 33.90 and 33.70. Uh, I like it very much. I think it's going to my target. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up to the date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN Dot com under trading newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So we want to look at the, the market that's just opened. The Dow is up 71 at 27,208, getting closer and closer to the all-time high. But now we've got to be careful right here with a lot of news about to come out. Um, 
you don't want to be too bearish. You don't want to be too bullish. You just got to have whatever positions you have. Just start monitoring them a little closely. Um, and uh, I have here the automated Chapman wave uh, resistance levels. Here's the dollar. Uh, 98 and 98 is the uh, one of the resistance levels we're actually above that now then you get a whole plethora in the weekly chart the middle chart here is 99.16 99.27 and then look at the monthly chart a chunk so it would take the dollar to go to 100 to really break out so right here a little bit of resistance coming on a little bit there's quite a bit of resistance if you're looking at the Dow I uh, and DU the Dow up uh, 63 now Look, uh, it broke all those resistance. It kept bumping up against it. It couldn't get through for four days. And then yesterday, the last hour, just saw this acceleration up, went right through the levels. The next one now is 27,474, then 27,461 in the daily chart. Uh, a lot have been broken in the 120-minute chart. And then after that, you're up in the 28,000s. This is the weekly, and then the monthly goes to 27,506, so a little bit lower down. Um, so this is going to be very important to see how how the market handles the coming days. Look at the S&P with the automated Chapman Wave uh, resistance levels. A lot, all the way to 3,007.65, 3, 2008 and 3,010.84, and we are right now at 3,008. I oh, know we have 3,010.93 in the S&P. We're a couple of pennies above the last resistance levels. This is really a, a very powerful move. Look at the QQQ up at 135 at 193.78. It also is it's powered above. Two of the resistance automated resistance levels, and 194.40 is next, um, and then a whole bunch much higher up. IWM, I'm looking to see, does the IWM lead the way again? IWM is down 31, and that's what I was thinking that the IWM and some of the very, I mentioned in my show the Tiger Conditions Hour coming up at noon yesterday and the day before, and the day before that there are a ton of um, a ton of single-digit stocks that have just gone straight up, a lot of them, not way more than usual. And that represents like the, the Russell 3000 or the 1000. These are all the small caps, 2000. And as a result, it means that fund managers are starting to put money to work. And I think that we need to now be a little bit careful in some areas. But as long as they're finding... Um, some place to put their money that they feel comfortable with, they will start to go there slowly, and then it'll increase and get quicker and quicker, and the and prices should be moving up. So IWM should be on your list of watch to see what's happening. So the next thing we're looking at right now is um, within the context of the different um, the different indexes. Let me see what gold has got right here. Gold has got um, resistance levels. Uh, it's in between. Uh, 1515 has gone through. Um, yeah, it's just stuck in a range. The most important thing is 1486 to 1481 are key support levels in gold. Um, I want to also look at crude oil. Let me just do it on this particular chart right now. Crude oil has dropped sharply. It's down a dollar 32. Oh, at 54.44, 53s, that's it. Better hold the 53s, otherwise, it's a big problem. Let me go to this right now. Uh, we're looking at CL. Crude oil, this is the continuous contract, uh, made a peak C of pulling back sharply. And the other rectangle, I've been talking about this for a long time, for, for, for over a month, I've been saying the, um, crude oil has been stuck in a range. And my expectation was the 57s would be um, very strong resistance and the 52s would be very good support. Well, it went to 58s. Hit the 200 period moving average. Now it's down to 54.42. Stuck in a range. Stuck in a range means stuck in a range for a while. And this could stay for a little while. We're watching crude oil. I want you to do a couple of things here. Um, uh, I want to look at the look. Wheat dust. Wheat is trading quite nice. It's up two and three quarters at 480 and a quarter in the continuous contract. What's really important is look. The MACD is starting to rally. Stochastic is up at 81 percent. That's usually very good. So I'm going to draw in a cup formation, like this. It doesn't have to go to the left side high because a lot of things have to happen before it can even do that. But right here on a shorter term basis, you've got trend line. Look at this. It broke this trend line resistance right here. And then there's another one a little higher 
And you can see that if um, wheat starts to trade in the, it's in a leg B, right? It's actually in a peak B. And it says that if wheat starts to trade at 486 and a half or higher, all of a sudden, there's this very big, ugly candle. Some of you will remember that if you trade wheat. Uh, on the 12th of August, it plummets from the 505 round number high, opens at round number 503, goes to round number 505 high, and then slumps down to the 469 area. So once you get into that, the halfway point would be the 491 is really the marker there. How does it handle 491 if it can get there? This weekly chart, this is what I call the Eiffel Tower, like an uppercase A, straight up, straight in, happens to even be a leg A. It's one of the monster moves. We happen to be lucky at the time we were in the DBC, uh, which is the the agricultural fund, mostly agriculturals, and was doing very nicely. And then we got out. So um, nothing in right now, but looking at it and saying, hey, maybe the Chinese will be buying our uh, agricultural products. We'll see. Um, look at this. Uh, soybean is up 13 and a half at 880. Really nice. This is now an egg. B, and brand new B because it made a lower low over there. But the MACD and Stochastic are holding very nicely. So here again, look at the left side. Left side high of, this is a continuous contract, of, of the 22nd of August of 882. Clears that. Your next hurdle, it says, try to get to the high of the 13th of August at eight in the 896 area. So that's it. And key support levels will be uh, the, the low of the day today. Breaks the low of the day today, that's not, not going to be good. Let's look at corn, corn, as we say here in Boston area, up two and three quarters at 362 and three quarters. And it's really lagging, not so great. Made an uppercase A Eiffel Tower and broke the left side low. This is a real lagger. Can it become a leader? No, not until it breaks the gap down low that started the close on the 12th of August at 3.94, and the next day gaps down the high is 3.88. So that, uh, that's six or eight points. That needs, it needs to get there. It needs to get into the 3.92 area. The moment it starts to get to 3.92, you will see that weekly chart improving. That's going to be a tough, tough uh, road to her. Uh, uh, lean hogs. I've just got this as a continuous contract. It's up three at 63.175. It's had a successful arch formation. I like this. Arch formation is right there. And so far, it's held the left side low very nicely. So I can start to draw in. The, the H pattern goes to a, a U-shaped pattern, and that's really good. And it says if there is a rally, it can go to the to the left side moving average of importance, or it could go to, um, right there, or it could go to the previous high. And that previous high in the continuous contrast was round number 68 uh, on, the, on the 5th of September. So we're watching that one closely. So as I said to subscribers today, watch out for any kind of failure. And I'll talk about that when we get back. Um, I'll be right back. Now's Dow, Dow's only up 29, S&P's up eight. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%.
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leverage ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. So uh, Platinum, this is Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. This is Trade What You See. And we're looking at 951.20 up 11 in Platinum. Same pattern. It's going to be stuck, I think, in this range here. Uh, leg D in the weekly. I'm pretty sure that by uh, for tomorrow's close, we'll be at a peak D in the weekly chart. Yep, the consolidation of the spectacular. Look at the spectacular move here. That's what you've got to anticipate. I was asked about, um, uh, let's see if I can get to it right now. Um, Let's see. Tony in Philadelphia wants to know, uh, good morning, Basil. If time permits, could you review XBI? XBI is, in fact, this is has to do with the, uh, this is a spider S&P, uh, what do they actually call it? XBI. Yeah, the biotech. So uh, XBI is trading quite nicely here. It's up. It has been up. But I, I think that this is an area you've got to be careful about, 83.39. You know, let, let me just put it this way. If you look at the IBB, which is the NASDAQ, it's the same sort of thing. The XBI is just a little bit better. Often the I, IBB is a little bit better. This is the IBB is the NASDAQ biotech. The S&P biotech is the XBI. I, I think that they are kind of stuck. You know, you've got the politics involved. I would prefer to look at some of the, uh, some of the areas that are independent, so they're in the medical field, but they're in areas that are under the radar. They're not, uh, have, they don't do, they're in the improving healthcare area. That's really what I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at. So I'm just going to say XBI, if it's at 83.13, if it's able even to get to the 83.89 to 80. 403 area that 8464 200 period exponential moving average is like a magnet it should then bring it towards it but the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart of 77.46 of i think it's going to take a little bit to get away from that it's going to keep being a magnet on any weakness at all it'll keep coming so i'm just saying be careful but if you're in it it at 8313 it needs to hold 82 uh, 82.10 to, I would say, 81.70. Let me see the 120-minute chart. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's the way I'm looking at it. And just, I would have a trading stop on at least part of my position. I don't want it to give back too much because if it goes at any point in the next week, if it actually goes under yesterday's low of 83, of, sorry, 80. It was 81.59. Nah, that's a long way, two, two points, two, one and a half. Yeah, if it, if it starts to go under 81.90, I'd be kind of careful because it, it, it has a habit. Look, it's making lower lows and lower highs. This is the first time it's making a little bit of a lower high. Uh, I'm sorry, a higher high, higher low, and then a stronger high. And that kind of is good. But every time it's done that, it's stalled within a day or two. So 
Tony, it could turn out to be a nice slow mover. That's what you really want. Rather than a pullback with lower lows, you want it to see um, higher lows and higher highs. That's really the, the theme of moving up a buy mode, higher highs, higher lows. So I'm just saying to you, it's not a favorite area of mine, but I think uh, uh, that's the one that I think is acting much better. IYH is actually also holding quite well when you think about what's coming up in politics against uh, anything to do with healthcare. Um, so, I mean, in terms of pricing, let's put it that way. So, I, yeah, just be a little careful. Uh, next question I had was, um, could I have a look at the IWM? Why is it pulling back? Well, it's pulling back because it's had a spectacular move. But in the within the context of thinking of it maybe like a rectangle formation, look at this. If you think rectangle formation, it's just stuck in this range. So until the IWM actually starts to trade on a weekly basis two out of three weeks in the 164.50 or higher area, That'll be a big breakout because that'll say it's going to try to test the high that was made back in May of 161.11. So you need to see this follow through. And the MACD and Stochastic are very good. So I'm talking about this as if it's a temporary thing. This is a better looking chart than the IBB or the XBI. It's the Russell 2000. I'm just talking about chart formations. So I hope that helps you, Tony. And the other thing that was asked of me, if I can do that, if I can remember. Oh, um, yeah, for my subscribers, some opening call. I didn't really have a chance to give it to do justice that I like. I would like to do. So the GDX, I've already started doing an analysis, but I didn't write it up for today. I'll do it. I'll probably do it for tomorrow or definitely over the weekend. I just don't see a rush right now to get into the GDX. It's had a spectacular move. It just needs time. It doesn't have to break down. I've got tremendous support in the 26s. Here it is at 28.56. Um, let's just deal with it uh, as it unfolds. I just think this is a nice digestive phase of this spectacular move. And then monthly chart is in leg C. It eventually should get to a leg D. That 31.88, 200 period moving average should become a target. Aha. Uh -huh. Do I hear? Do I hear the music in the background? No, nope, I don't. Okay. Next question I had was. Um, CCI, I don't know why that came up. This is the stock that we had, had a fantastic move. We're in at the one, uh, 135s. We took uh, some money off on the way up to 145, and then at 148.21, it hit 149.47, and then came plunging down. The reason why I've kept some of it is because the, I said to subscribers, I still think because of the monthly chart that the TLT, that is, I'm, I'm talking about this as if it's an, it's an interest rate thing. It's, it's towers, uh, a REIT, Crown Castle, a REIT in the, in the REIT area, and it does towers. So I think that there's still room. Uh, there's going to be a peak C in September if there's no new high above 148.19. The TLT is trading at 140.98. I think at some point, with the pressure on countries to, um, to fund so many different things, uh, I think that the pressure is going to be for rates at least to have one more phase of lower rates. And then I think we've got a different kind of a picture to look at. So just dealing with it on that basis, that's the reason I thought I'd keep it. But I'm thinking that if it does, if CCI does have a rally, uh, we'll take a little more off on that rally. I, I don't want to give back uh, huge, huge gains that we had, uh, 135 to 149. I mean, that's that was a big gain. So um, that's the way I'm looking at it. And it's this weekly chart that is about, this week is about to go to a sell mode, uh, sorry, a sell signal. The daily is in a sell mode. I need to see the MACD cross negative and the stochastic 80, 86, which is still strong in the weekly chart, go under 80%, and then it goes from a sell signal to a sell mode. Meantime, that monthly chart, leg D, is still acting really well. So let's just deal with that. Now, I mentioned earlier on about the rectangle formation. Look how this went from a peak A, B, C, D. Right here is the D, another D in the uh, two-minute chart to give a nice reversal signal. And finally, it went above the rectangle, into the rectangle, and down. And now it's got a one-to-one -one relationship to the 200-period to the moving average there of 3,002. Uh, 2,999 would be the 10-minute uh, chart, 
uh, moving average that we'd be looking at uh, for the e-mini. And that's kind of what I expect. I said to, to my subscribers, we're going to place buys on what we still want much lower down today because I am anticipating that there's some kind of bumpiness and that if at 130 the Dow is giving back gains and instead of being up uh, 50 points, it is actually up only 15 or even down some, that's going to be a harbinger of, of possibly a weak close. So uh, we're looking at some kind of resistance here, but the technicals are still very strong. Look, even with this pullback, look at the Dow holding in leg D. And this MACD, the moving average convergence in the daily, is still very strong. And the stochastic's at 97%. It'll take really bad news to get it back under 26,850. And that'll be a sign to say, whoops, now weakness is going to set. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Let's just do a wrap up here. Basil Chapman for Larry Pesavento. Trade what you see. It's my pleasure to be here at noon today, um, Eastern Time. I'll be doing my show called the Tiger Technicians Hour. You see all these charts. We'll discuss them in greater detail, discuss the patterns that we're always looking at. So the Dow is broken above the resistance. Now it's going to the next level. It's trying to go for 27,398. Uh, the way the technicals are here, I think it should, it, it, it has a chance to at least try to make that. My big concern is that we've seen so many double tops in the chart formations that um, there are there are um, resistance levels that we've got to respect. And if the Dow breaks into the 27,600s, it's up and away because it's just fresh territory. 
But let's see how it handles this 27,300 to 27,400 area. And I, I'm talking about the Dow because it's it's what everyone speaks about when it's on the news. But the S&P is the same thing. 3,027 was the high. Um, technicals are still very strong, so there's still room to go to the upside. It's a green line. The green line goes all the way to 3,067. So it starts to break into the 3,060s. That's going to be good action. So be careful. The IWM is taking a bit of a breather. Some of the Dow stocks have done really well, but it's under the radar stocks that seem to be holding up even better, like the IWM up until today, taking a bit of a breather. So have a wonderful day, and uh, I will see you. Um, hopefully, I'll see you at noon. Otherwise, Steve Rhodes will be doing a Larry show tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, as I said, and I don't want to. Uh, my engineers already noted how many times I've stepped right over the break. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a moment or two. And in the moment or two, I'm going to say, watch the VIX index. Trading in the, um, probably using up too much time, 14s says that there's some buying pressure underneath the four, underneath 15 in the 14s and 13s. That's buying pressure. Get your 16s, start to see selling pressure. Make it as simple as possible. I think I'm about to hear the break. Final segment, Coda coming up. There it is. Yes, no. Soft, very soft. I'm waiting for it. I didn't want to beat go through that stop sign again. All right, there it is. Thank you. Let's see how the dollar's doing as we're about to wrap up. The dollar's hold, given back some of the gains, only up 17 cents. It's that gold that's holding in right now. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the day. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you at noon. Check out my opening call newsletter.